to pass to Clark, Jackie Brown's family and friends. I met Jackie when I joined Mount Zion in 1979. We both sung in the choir and we were altos. Jackie was funny. She and I would talk about a lot of different subjects, but we would always talk about the Lord. I remember one time I went over to Jackie's house and we were discussing about the King James Version of the Bible. I told her that I did not understand King James. She told me that when she would study God's word, she would use three different Bible translations. She suggested that I purchase several Bible translations, which I did. Jackie and I were both substitute teachers in AISD. Even though subs were not allowed to speak about Jesus, Jackie would witness to the students about him. <laughs> about him, I'm sorry. She said these students needed to know about Jesus, and I believe that some of those students accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior because of Jackie. I will miss Jackie, smile, and our conversation. I will never forget our friendship and sisterhood. Thank you. To the angel of this house and the ministers, um, just a brief reflection on Mama Jackie. She was Mama Jackie to me. She was introduced to me when I was a young girl. She's the stepmother to my two older brothers. So she became my bonus mother, that's what I called her. Um, I would like to say that I am a better woman in Christ. I am a better single woman in Christ because of Mama Jackie. Um, this lady has some amazing strength and I know that everyone has said everything that I could say, but I just wanted to say that um, when I saw her last on uh, Thursday, I talked to one of the ladies that visit her from Mount Zion and I said, if I could only and can of transition and be praying and praising God. Every five minutes she asked for someone to pray for her. Some people fear death not knowing where they're going, but Mama Jackie, she knew where she was going. So to the end of time, she was gonna praise and pray her way through. To my brothers and sisters, and Jackie, Mama Jackie's family, I say to you, be encouraged. And I know that some of Jackie is with all of y'all, Aunt Pat, Teresa, and Derek, and all of y'all. Some of your mom is with you. Some of your qualities are because your mom poured into you. And I thank y'all for allowing me to call your mom, Mama Jackie, and for her to be my bonus mother. And I appreciate you guys giving me the honor and privilege to stand here and say something about Mama Jackie, man, I just, I love that lady, like she was my own mom. And some of my darkest hours, there was Mama Jackie saying, hold on, don't give up, keep the faith. The race isn't given to the swift, you know, just, just everything was going wrong in my life from sickness to divorce and death, and Mama Jackie was right there. And the last time we had a good time was at a wedding, and I was talking about, I'm staying single to Jesus, send someone, not save them. Boy, did we have a good time, because she encouraged me to stay single until he sent. So, so to this uh, great pastor of this house, thank you for everything that you did for Mama Jackie and her family during this time. Now let everything that has breath praise the Lord. has been established. But I know that Jackie, and that's what I call her, Jackie, very lovingly. I know that uh, what she would say up here right now is, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I've known Jackie for over 30 years. Uh, and all I ever knew Jackie to be was a servant of God. She went where God told her to go, when he told her to go, 
and did what God told her to do when she got there. She took every opportunity on her journey while here to seek God. She saw him in his written word, prayer, and experiences and circumstances of her life. God knew Jackie, and Jackie knew God. She was, when we were there, when she was transitioning, she kept saying, I'm just ready to go home. And I, some of you may have felt that she was talking about physical, but I knew Jackie was talking about, I'm ready to go to my heavenly home. Jackie's family became very dear to us. Her, her daughter Tasha, her, her mother, because on Sundays I used to have to work, and they would take care of my children. They got them to church, they kept them while in church, and fed them after church. And to this day, they are young adults, but they always address Jackie as Grandma Jackie. We really, really, really love Jackie. And I know that that may seem small what she did on Sundays to some of you, but I will never forget it. Family, live the legacy your mother has left you because she has left you a firm foundation in Christ. So live your life such that when the skies unfold, you will see her again. And Pastor Clark, uh, the family, we received remarks from uh, uh, Reverend Terrence Grant Malone, and the family did ask if I would read that. It reads, as a former student at Huston Tillerson University, this is so tough to hear that the ladies dorm overnight director at Huston Tillerson University for many years have transitioned to glory. She would let them use her van late at night to go get food and at times would take her to, their, to the family's home for supper. And being Jackie, he said that she continued to maintain relationships with them through Facebook and always had an encouraging word. Good night, Sister Jacqueline Graham. Protocol having been established, good evening. Back in 1986, 87, uh, I had, uh, when Jackie joined over here, I met her through her, uh, through Tasha, I know, because I was supervisor of a girls' missionary auxiliary. And so that brought us together. So the Lord put something on my heart, and I said, well, Jackie, I need to talk to you. And some other ladies, I said the same thing, too. So we began the Widening Circle, which was a prayer group. We held retreats, prayed in people's homes, people invited us in to pray. We fellowshiped, and we also fellowshiped at that time with uh, Sister uh, Dora Fenard had God's humble servant. We went up on 12th Street to witness and pray. We went up on 11th Street to witness and pray. I went to uh, Dallas, uh, my daughter invited us. We had uh, a session in her home and in another lady's home that asked us to come in that I didn't know at the time. We had a lot of fun traveling to God's Women's Conference, as Sister Dora said. We uh, went to towns mostly in the depth, Indian Wells, Palm Springs, Rancho Mirage, Palm Desert, and we did go to San Diego one year, they switched it. But our first real retreat was with the Golden Gate Baptist Church, in uh, the, the, the churches in uh, Dallas, but Sister Hazel Thomas and her women, she was a director of the mission, held a session in Carson County. So Sister Jackie, Claudia, Roberta Callahan, and I attended there.
Then we went to a large conference in Oklahoma. And she used to kind of talk about me sometime in the church uh, because years ago, I didn't sit in one place in the church. And sometimes people would say, where's uh, Sister Allison? And she would say, well, she's sitting over there because she, she wants to know everybody that's in this church. <laughs> and then we, when we went to Oklahoma, uh, and some people from different churches went, and Reverend Evans was there. So I had stepped out of the auditorium, and Reverend Evans asked Jackie about me. And uh, she said, oh, she'll, she'll be back. She's probably getting everybody's name and telephone number in this place. <laughs> but anyway, we were traveling buddies, and that's what I was to talk on, is traveling a Christian woman that I learned a lot from. Amen. So if you don't know Jesus, please accept him. Amen. Let's honor Jackie's life by accepting the Lord. I know she ministered to some women. She had to, uh, two or three special women. Uh, I know of only one, but accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I leave you with John 14, 31, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do, arise and let us go hence. Amen. Amen. Good evening. First, give an honor to God, my Savior, Jesus Christ, and praise and honor to the overseer of this great house, Reverend Dr. G.B. Clark, and my pastor in his absence, Dr. B.W. McClendon, which is a member of this great church, which is out of town and revivable since his love. This family would like to thank everyone that have expressed their love in so many different ways. Who we, who we are are descendants of two, a brother and sister. So what I would like to do is all the family of Orly and Lewis, please stand. So, go ahead. We, are, we have been overwhelmingly blessed with our hearts, and our hearts are just full. Please continue to play for us in these days and months to come. I hope I have a little bit longer than two minutes. <laughs> Out of all the amazing things that we have said about Jackie, a couple of things are crystal clear. She loved the Lord with all her heart and body and soul. She dedicated her life to Christ and his works, and she meant it. And she loved and honored her pastor, Reverend Dr. G.B. Clark. Jackie was my pa what my pastor calls fat, a fat member. Not fat. Faithful, available, and teachable. Can you imagine if all of us were like that? Their jobs would be easier. Amen. Pastor Clark Hart is, is heavy as ours because he, he lost a strong, faithful link in his membership chain that Amen. completed her journey. <laughs> then lastly, she loved her church and her church family. I think, I think she worked in every office, right? <laughs> Except deaconess and usher, was she an usher? <laughs> but I mean, she just loved her church family. And most of all, she loved her family. She loved us. She loved, it. She loved everybody she came in contact with. You just, you just fell in love with Jackie. There's nothing much more that we can say about Jackie. We would truly miss her, but we would draw us in knowing that she is resting in the arms of our God. Phyllis, Tasha, Bibi, Derek, Terrence, your mama has laid a great foundation and a legacy for y'all to follow and to continue. Continue to build your relationship with the Lord. <laughs> Keep it first in everything you do. You know, uh, Jackie used to talk about, she prayed about everything. We laughed, we laughed one day because 
she prayed for a parking space. And she got it. I mean, that's how she was. She prayed about everything. She and and when we she would drive around and whoop, there's a parking space. Cause she she really believed. Learn the word of God. Yeah. I have a quick little funny story. We were at a retreat once, and Jackie was teaching. Some lady in the audience tried to correct her English. And so I said, no, she didn't. <laughs> and, I'm like, and I was watching Jackie, I was like, okay, uh, you know, that's my cousin, you know, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? <laughs> yeah. But Jackie did, she started quoting scripture up and there. No weapons from against you will prosper. Uh, this and that, that lady was shouting all over the room. I don't even, I guess she forgot what even words she was trying to correct. <laughs> but that's what you need. Learn that word. Find you a good man of God, a soul watcher that can watch over. I, 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 I go to a church where my pastor knows me. I got his phone number, phone number on speed dial, okay? You know, these mega churches are great, but I just feel like a, you're the man of God that's overseer of your soul needs to know you. He needs to know you personally. Continue in love and fellowship with your family, like we always do. Stay involved. Even start traditions, like going to Tasha's for, for Thanksgiving. Can she cook in Louisiana? I'm not sure. Can she cook? I mean, we just have to keep our traditions going. Don't stop. As I close, but in our grief, we need to remind ourselves that no matter how inconvenient the time was, God's timing remains perfect. On last Thursday evening, before Jackie's nightly medications, Jackie kept saying, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. We can read into that so many ways. So we just say, Rick, Jackie, Westwell, we'll see you again. Just to, okay, I, I know I'm not on program to talk, but you know, uh, I done played everybody else off, so I'm gonna. I, I could not leave here without at least, and I, I'll, give you, I'll give you time back. I'm only gonna sing about 30 seconds. Uh, I could not leave here. My family came here in September of 1979, and uh, Sister Jackie was in the choir then. And to this day, she, for me, she was in the choir. And out of all the things she did, for me, she would always be a member of the Mount Zion Choir. I need for past, present, and even future choir members of the Mount Zion Choir to please stand. Please stand. Please stand. If you ever sung in the choir with Jackie, please stand. I needed to do that because she was so faithful. And at least one of her ministers of music needs to say something to her, so, so, say something and show that only a faithful person could do this. And I said future too because her spirit will always be in this choir. In that alto section. Keeping y'all on. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. So uh, I, I, need, I need it for, for us, y'all can go ahead and stand. I'm going to sing two seconds. I didn't know I was on program to sing. That's why I'm going to sing for two seconds. But, but I, I need to, to tell you that because Jackie was one of the sweetest people that you will ever meet and one of the sweetest spirits that anyone could ever have. And I want to say in front of you, I appreciated her as a choir member in this choir. So I'm going to sing for her. When I went to the hospital, when they told me she was transitioning, I went up to the hospital, and when I walked in the door, they said, you know what She said, yeah, that's my best friend. So your best friend is going to sing for her, but I'm singing to the family, but just a piece of this. I'm just going to sing a piece. What do you do? When you've done all you can Seems like it's never enough What do you say 
When your friends turn away, you're alone. Tell me what do you give when you've given your all? And seems like it's never enough. Well, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand. Watch the Lord see you through. After you've done all you can, you just stand. Tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how do you deal with the shame? Oh, how can you smile when your heart has been broken? Fear with pain, so much pain. What do you do when you've done all you can And it seems like you can't make it through Well, you just stand, stand, stand Don't you dare give up Through the storm, through the rain Through the hurts and through the pain Don't you bear Family, after you've gone through the hurt, after you've gone through the pain, after you've gone through the storm, after you've gone through the rain, you pray and cry, pray and cry, pray and cry, pray and cry, just like Jackie she pray. person as Sister Jackie Brown in your family. Nobody has to tell me that she, she was an anchor. I think it, um, it, it has all been said, but then there's, I guess, something else to say. And what that something else is, is tied to what Jackie, I call her Sister Brown, loved. And that's the Word of God. Mr. Brown was a Bible student. 
and therefore she could be an effective servant. I think I, think I need to say that again. Mr. Brown was a Bible student. Thusly, she could be an effective servant. I'm always appalled as a number of people who call themselves missionaries and never study the mission. But I think that, no, I know that the legacy that she has left is worthy of emulation. Somebody who is close to her family, but then so many of us have said so much, somebody that's close to her ought to pick up the legacy. She lives on. Well, I don't have to talk about her in the past as a past. She lives now. She just lives in another era, in another place, in another position. But the beauty of it is, Four years after I came to this church, she moved into Christ Jesus. I don't even think you got that either. Four years after I came to this church, she moved into Christ Jesus. And the beauty of it is, once you move in him, you never have to move again. Those of us who, it's evident that those of us who had the very special privilege of knowing Sister Brown should be thanking God that he let her stay with us as long as he did. So God let her stay here to impact lives. And the evidence of our presence here says that she was successful and the purposes for which God let her remain here so long. I would describe uh, Sister Brown as not only a volunteer in the criminal justice ministry and going in and around prisons, but Sister Brown's life, and this is a pretty good statement, Sister Brown's life took a missionary evangelical stance. I said her life. I didn't say her mouth. All of us who talk mission and evangelism don't live it. I believe Sister Brown lived it more than she talked it. That's what made her so powerful when she talked it. It's, uh, this church is the better. But not only this church, a whole lot of churches are the better. Because her life touched so many lives. I look in this audience and I see people from out of the city who made the sacrifice to come here today. This is Thursday. To celebrate the life and legacy and I'm going to use this word because it's accurate of a great woman. Amen. 
Many times that word is used as a joke. But with Sister Brown, it's an accurate statement. What made her great? He was a servant of the Lord. I'm going to read a passage of scripture. And I'm going to read more than I normally read in sessions and settings like this. But I won't, I won't try to exegete or expose all of it. But I'm going to read those verses because in these passages, you begin to get some semblances of the life of Jackie Brown. I'm going to use a subject after I read these passages. Standing on the good side of therefore. <clears throat> Romans chapter 5. I'm going to read verse 1 through 9. Family. I say to you, as I always say, Mount Zion's going to be here. And we're here for you. And as I stand here, as I sat here, and now stand here, I see an exhibition of faith. Stay there. Trust the God that Jackie trusted. So when you come here to this point, you know, I visited a, in the hospital. Those of us who went to the hospital to see Jack, they could look on a peaceful person, even in her declining moments. But here's the reason. Romans chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet preadventure. For a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. The life of Jackie Brown is a testimony to those verses. Paul was one of the strongest writers of the New Testament. And when he writes and you read his epistles, you see him use the word, therefore, in a regular basis. The word, therefore, for Paul is used with purpose. Because when you say, therefore, you usually open the door to your present and 
your future. Paul had in the first four chapters of the book of Romans that talked about the terrible state of humankind, how we were all wrapped up in sin on our way. The folk that I grew up under used to say, on our way to a no bottoms hell. But when you get to therefore in Romans, that therefore opens up a door that lets you move from that stance and that movement to hell into a gateway to heaven. But you don't do that just by reading it. You do that by believing it. And so family, you can be somewhat even in this moment of heaviness, you can take on a, 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 an element of joy and peace because you know that it's well with her soul. Paul would tell us before he gets to Romans chapter 5 that all human beings lived in a kind of helpless state and because of what happened in Genesis chapter 3, there was the wall put up between us and our Savior. But on Calvary, and I ain't got time to deal with this text, but on Calvary, after he gave himself to his, to death, and I, I like the way he said it because he gave up the ghost. After he gave himself to death and, and that veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom, and they put him in a grave, and he stayed there from Friday until Sunday, and he got up on an early Sunday morning. After that, a door was open so that we could move to the good side of their food. Oh, I don't think somebody listening. Let me see. Somebody, somebody might be living right now. Somebody might be sitting right now who's on the other side, that bad side. Of therefore. Anybody here with me? But there's also somebody here living on the good side of therefore. Can, can, can I say a little bit about that? A whole lot of folk are in here right now living on the good side because Jackie Brown lived. She was not ashamed to own her God. She was not ashamed to tell you if you didn't have faith, you're going to hell. I know I'm talking, I'm talking antiquated for some folk, but there's still a hell. And there's still a hell. You can call me Bremfi and whatever else. But I must tell you, if there's a hell. And, and, and if you're going to get out and get into the door to the good side, you're going to have to get a picture of what it is to be on the bad side. Oh, I, I could get into the demonstration, but I'm not going to get into all of that right now. But on the bad side, you don't know how to treat folk. On the bad side, you laugh when folk go to church. I'm talking about the bad side. On the bad side, you think Jesus Christ and God's a joke. But when you get to the good side, somebody says, there he is now, therefore. No condemnation. Not, 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 not universal. To those who are in where Jackie was and where Jackie is. Christ Jesus. So when you get on the good side, you are in him. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's some evidence when you're on the good side. Your walk changes. That's like saying you don't go where you used to go. Except you go on the Lord's business. Your talk changes. 
That means you can't talk to them, talk to somebody on the good side long before they tell you about Jesus. Y'all better help me right here. That's, that's Jackie Brown. You can't talk to her long before she's going to mention the goodness, the favor, the glory of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, her God. On the bad side, your conversation is guided by satanic power. But on the good side, your conversation is guided by the word of God. Somebody help me right here. And, and empowered by the spirit of God. So when, you're, when you're guided by the word of God like Sister Jackie was, and you're empowered by the spirit of God, then you can, even in pain, walk upright. Even in pain, you can say God is good. Even in pain, you can say God is still alive. Even in pain, you can tell somebody you better trust him. Because that's when you get on the good side. I wish I could tell you, I'm going to have to let you go, but that you ought to read this text. That, that's, some, that's some good stuff on the good side. First of all, Jackie had peace with God. Anybody here got peace with God? When you're on the good side. You, uh, listen, let me, let, me, let me. When you're on the good side, you can't hypocrite it. But if you're really on the good side, like Jackie Brown was, you got peace. I believe it's like peace like a river. Peace that said it's well with your soul. And I, 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 ain't, I ain't gonna ask for no hand, but I'm, I'm gonna pull you. I wonder what side you on. On the, on the good side. You can preach all this, you got, you got peace with God. You're no longer at enmity with him. On the good side, you have access to God. I, I don't know where you are, but I need him. Now, I don't need him just at noonday. I don't need him just on special privileges. I need him all the time when I'm driving down the highway. I need him when I get up every morning. I, I need him. When somebody's rubbing me up. And since I need him in Christ, he has made me, has made God accessible to me. So even though I want you to pray for me, I can go into the Holy of Holies myself. That's what Sister Brown, y'all better help me right. Sister Brown didn't have easy days every day. But she had God every minute. Sister Brown had some rough times. But she had God all the time. And she would tell somebody here, if you don't have it, you can have peace with God, but it's through faith. I, I could get off on that, but I ain't. But let me tell you, you can't put God in a test tube and decide whether he's real. But I tell you what you can do. You can trust him and he'll show you he's real. God doesn't have to show you who he is if you don't believe it. But somebody help me, oh, if you believe it. When it gets dark and it ought to be, he'll lighten up your path. When you get weak at the result of this world, he'll always give you strength. And when you think you're alone, he'll touch and say, no, you ain't. I promise. I promise. Anybody here know what it is to experience the promises of God? If God promised, he can't take it back. I promise. I promise. 
And you know the thing I like about it is Sister Brown took that literally. And so she could tell you any day, any, any day of the week, any time of the day, I never walk alone. And it's all right because God is good. But you find that out by faith. When you're on the good side, you got hope. And hope never makes you ashamed. So you can dream beyond the conception of the mind of a city that's better. You can think about it. And when you come here, you begin to realize it. Since, since Sister Brown, I, I, I'm gonna quit, this is too much. Since Sister Brown's life is a mission and evangelical life, she would want to tell, want to say, if she could stand up right now, she would say, listen, if you don't know Jesus, get to know him. Because see, that's the way she lived. That's the reason she went to the prisons. That's the reason she did so much. You, you read the obituary, you see so much she did that's designed to touch somebody else's life for Christ. Not, not for herself. She never bragged about what she did. That's one of the evidences of a good missionary. You don't, you don't chest out and say, I did. And no, Sister Brown never talked about all that she did to make other lives rich. She just did it and went on home. But when you got to brag about it, you ain't doing it for the glory of God. You're doing it for your glory. Somebody help me. Sister Brown lived for the glory of God. And now God is saying, it's all right. There's another thing, and I'm going to close on this, and it's not in any way close. God commended his love toward us. Why? We were yet sinners. I, I'm reading that. He, he commended his love, and if you believe it, you can be justified by the blood of his son who died that I might have life. So I want to leave you, my brothers and sisters, to tell you that. Sister Brown is in good hands. I'm heavy. I'm heavy. She's one of those persons that shortly after I got here, I carried to the pool. She's one of those persons who was faithful in the service of the Lord. She one of those persons in Bible study would be sitting right over there looking at her Bible, raising some deep questions and trying to get clarity on what God is saying for her to do as a mission. She one of those persons that showed up in Sunday school. One, one of those persons that's faithful in ministry, not just in the church, but around the world. So whenever it's written like it is, on this program, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Now if you go further, that's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And so I'm in good, I'm, in, I'm feeling good that when the roll is called up yonder, I said when the roll is called up yonder, I'm talking about when the book is open and all the deeds you've done in this life are staring you in the face. If Jackie Brown's name is not called, that role ain't gonna be complete. I'm glad. I'm glad. I can say with everybody who said here, well done. Well done. Good. and faithful sir if you're going to emulate her life if you're going to carry her legacy forward you got to get on the good side of therefore bless you
Brothers and sisters, this has truly been a celebration for a wonderful, for a wonderful woman now. Amen. Listen, as we prepare <coughs> to exit and the interment will be at <coughs> Cook Walden Memorial here of God with Roses. But the culinary committee is going to be that family, and as you go, they're going to have a place for you to go <coughs> so that we can all go to the cemetery and be together there with the police escort that we have. Amen. So they prepared for the immediate family. So there's some left. You're free, but we want the family, the family, <clears throat> the family to be served first. We fight in this culture over programs and plates. But we're not going to do that on this celebration day. Amen. Okay, y'all know I love y'all. Amen. Those of us except family ought to stand there and face the door. Excellent is thy name. I'm just a peer. All the earth. And I'm traveling. Trying to make it. Yeah, my thing. Few more mountains ahead. I just feel the name. Few more tears to shed. Few more battles to fight. Few more sleeping nights. I'm a peer. I'm a peer. I'm a pilgrim, I'm a pilgrim, traveling home, I'm just a pilgrim, and I'm traveling, traveling through, I'm just a pilgrim, and I'm traveling, trying to make it into heaven's door. Few more mountains ahead. Few more tears to shed. Few more battles to fight. Few more sleepless nights. I'm a pilgrim. I'm a pilgrim. I'm a pilgrim. Traveling home. I'm just a pilgrim. Traveling, trying to make it. Trying to gain eternal life. Few more mountains ahead. Few more tears to shed. Few more battles to fight. Two more sleep at night. Two more mountains ahead. Two more tears to shed. Two more mountains Two more mountains ahead. Two more tears to shed. Two more battles to fight. Two more sleep at night. I'm a pill. I'm a pilgrim, I'm a pilgrim, traveling home, oh, you know that I'm trapped.